But how does error correction work? We asked Professor van Lint to give us a simple example. Well, we have seen that music is recorded digitally as a long string of zeros and ones. In reading the information, an error can occur. That is to say, a one is interpreted as a zero, or a zero is interpreted as a one. Now, let us look at an example. Here is a very short symphony, one, zero, one, one. Now, here is a scheme where I will send seven bits instead of four. I have drawn three circles and numbered the parts into which the plane is divided. One, two, three, four, and the outer parts, five, six, and seven. I shall write these four bits into the parts numbered one, two, three, and four. Now the remaining three bits are determined by the following rule. In every circle, the number of ones should be even. So here at the bottom, we have two ones and a zero, so the remaining bit is a zero. Here we have three ones, so the remaining bit must be a one. And in this circle, we have two ones and a zero, so the remaining bit must be a zero. And we have changed one, zero, one, one, into one zero one one zero one zero. Now suppose an error occurs. Let us say an error occurs in position three. I shall mark it by an arrow. So that means this one is read as a zero. Now the receiver sees that Something is wrong in circle two because the number of ones has become odd. Something is wrong in circle one because the number of ones is again odd. However, in circle three, the number of ones is still even, so the error did not occur in that circle. The error has occurred in the intersection of circles one and two, but not in circle three so it must be in this position. So we now know where the error is, and since there are only two symbols, we can change the erroneous symbol into the correct one. This is an example of a one error correcting code, and we have used only seven symbols instead of four. The error correcting codes employed on CDs use a special type of arithmetic called a finite field. For example, this is how addition works when you only use numbers from 0 to 12. You add the numbers as usual, but for your answer you take the remainder on dividing by 13. So 8 plus 11 normally gives 19, but if we take the remainder on dividing by 13, we get 6 as the answer instead. 10 plus 7 normally gives 17. But the remainder on dividing by 13 is 4. We do the same for multiplication. 7 times 2 is 14, but the remainder on dividing by 13 is 1. 6 times 8 is 48, but the remainder on dividing by 13 is 9. Now the important feature of a field is that you can divide by any non-zero number. If you look down the column for, say, 4, then every number from 0 to 12 appears just once. So 9 times 4 equals 10. That means 10 divided by 4 equals 9. And so on. What I will explain is the concept of the Reed-Solomon code. This is the type of code that is used on the compact disc. However, for the sake of simplicity, I will not use long strings of zeros and ones. 
but assume that the music is recorded using elements of the field F13, that is to say the integers from 0 to 12. Let us assume the music is given as a string A0 to A10. And as before, I will add some extra symbols. So the symbols C0 up to C10 are the original symbols, which I have indicated by the red color. And two more will be added on, which I have indicated by the blue color. And here is the rule. The sum of the symbols C0, C1, up to C12 should be 0. And if we take each symbol multiplied by the number of its location, and we add all these, the sum should again equal 0. These two equations determine the final two symbols. Now again, let us assume an error occurs say, in position with number i. So instead of ci, we receive ri equals ci plus e. e is the magnitude of the error. And the remaining symbols, rj, are equal to cj. Now, if we do the calculations again, the sum of the received symbols will not be 0 but it will be equal to e. So we say, oops, an error has occurred. And in fact, we know the magnitude of the error is e. The second calculation, r1 plus 2, r2, etc., yields i times e, since the error in position i was e. Now, since division is possible with these symbols, we can divide the second by the first, finding the number i. That is to say, we have the magnitude of the error and the location of the error, and we can thus correct. Here's an example. 11111 is a word in this code. Now here we have received an 8 in position 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So the size of the error, E, equals 7. And the position of the error, I, is 4. When we do the calculations, we find R0 plus plus R12 is 7. So indeed, E is 7. And R1 plus 2, R2 plus etc. is 2. Now we divide 2 divided by 7, since we're working mod 13, is equal to 28 divided by 7, and that is 4. So we have found the position of the error. Now R4 was 8, so we know that C4 should be 8 minus 7, and that is 1. The error has been corrected. The codes employed on CDs work in a similar way, but they involve binary numbers. For instance, here's how you add 3-bit numbers. In this example, 011 plus 001 equals 010. And here's how you multiply them. You can see that 110 times 010 gives the answer 100. And you can divide by any non-zero number. If you look along the column for, say, 101, then each of the eight binary numbers appears just once. So 110 times 101 equals 111. That means that 111 divided by 101 equals 110, and so on. And it's just this idea, but with 8-bit numbers, that's used for compact disk codes. Codes that can even cope with slots cut in a disk. Although the average disk will not be damaged as badly as this one, 
it still can be played by a good compact disc player. But this is how it would sound if there were no error correction involved. But thanks to error correction, it actually sounds like this. To deal with these bursts of errors, the compact disc system uses two codes rather than one. The first encoder takes groups of 24 information symbols and produces groups of 28 intermediate symbols. These are then fed through delay lines of increasing length. Then the second encoder converts groups of 28 symbols into groups of 32 output symbols. This means that two successive information symbols are now at least 32 symbols apart when encoded. The information is interleaved in time. And it's these groups of 32 code symbols which are sent to the modulation encoder and then written to the disk. Now the decoding process is the reverse of the encoding. Each group is processed by a decoder to give a group of 28 intermediate symbols. This decoder can correct up to two symbol errors. The groups of intermediate symbols are then passed through delay lines of decreasing lengths. And another decoder processes them to give groups of 24 information symbols. This decoder can also correct up to two errors. And it's these groups of 24 information symbols which are turned into the analog output signal. So let's see what happens when there is a burst error. The burst error affects several adjacent code symbols. And the first decoder can't correct them all. But it will almost certainly detect them. And its output will contain the special symbols. But the delay lines spread these out. So now the second decoder only has to deal with one error in a group, and it can easily correct that. And the result of applying all this theory to the recording of sound is a remarkably faithful reproduction of the original signal, even if your own copy of the disk is somewhat damaged.